Amen. Hey, let's jump into the Word. Uh, I have been teaching the whole month. Text somebody and let them know that the Word is getting ready to go live on uh, uh, our website, cfwcorlando.com, cfwcorlando.com. Pull your cell phones out and text somebody and let them know. Text somebody and let them know. Uh, they are, are going to want to hear this today. Um, look at your neighbor for me real quick and say, Pastor's getting ready to preach on discipleship. All right, that, that, that's, going to, that's going to help you today. Discipleship, discipleship, discipleship. Um, because we are walking through our 90-day journey, and it's impossible for you to walk through a 90-day spiritual journey without having some kind of discipline in your life. Look at your neighbor and say, we all need discipline in our lives. So I've been teaching for the last month on purpose. All of us have a purpose, and it is up to us to follow that passion with everything within us. As we walk through this 90-day journey, I would like uh, to move to the next area or include the next area is a better way to say that, about spirit that is working within us. That spirit that keeps us focused on our purpose or the spirit that distracts us from our destiny. So today I want to talk about be spirit-led. Look at your neighbor and say, be spirit-led. Be spirit-led. Because of the cross, I want you to pay attention because what I'm getting ready to say is very important. Because if not, you're going to get confused by what I'm saying, and, and, and you need to hear this. Because of the cross of Calvary, Jesus has totally set us free. That I want you to understand that you are saved by the finished work of Calvary alone. No works can be added to that. You are saved by the finished work of Calvary right now as you sit in this building if you have given your heart to Jesus, you stand before him right now, holy, blameless, and you don't have a single fault in the eyes of God. You are perfect as you are right now. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Now, if you knew anything about what I just told you, my sermon should be over because you all should be shouting the victory that God has set you free of any sin that you ever could commit. He set you free of your past sins, your present sins, and your future sins. Look at your neighbor and say, I am sinless. Right. God took care of your sins, and you are saved by the finished work of Calvary. Because, here's the second part, because you've been set free, you don't need to live a life of bondage. Look at your neighbor and say, because I've been set free, I don't need to live a life of bondage. You know, I, in the old times when people were set free, some people stayed under bondage. Do you know you can stay under bondage and still be free and live a life of bondage? So today, I want to talk about following or being led by the Spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, be led by the Spirit. Yeah. Now, the reason you want to be led by the Spirit, because he knows the path of freedom. <laughs> let's look at, let's, let, let's look. There are two spirits that are working in you. There's the Holy Spirit 
or there's two forces, should I say, that's working in you. There's the Holy Spirit, and then there's the spirit of flesh. Okay, there's the Holy Spirit and the spirit of flesh. One spirit brings you to your life purpose, and the other spirit brings you to death. One spirit brings you to your life purpose, and the other spirit brings you to death. I want to give you five points that I've been doing. Every, are y'all enjoying this journey? Anybody being blessed by this journey? Anybody? Let, let me, I want to give you five points, and then I want to take my seat. Um, um, the meaning of being led is to go before or, will to, or with to show the way to conduct or escort. The Spirit comes to show you the way. The Holy Spirit comes to show you the direction. So here's your fourth, first point. You might want to write this down. You've been taking notes. I'm actually teaching, so I'm not preaching, so, so that you can catch this. The first point that you need to make is, uh, the first point I need to make is you have to feed the spiritual man daily. Whatever you feed will take over your life. That's enough to shout right there, isn't it? Let's go to Romans 8 chapter. I'm going to start at the fifth verse. <clears throat> Reading from the New Living Translations. Listen what it says. Those who are dominant, watch the screen if you don't move fast enough. So you can watch the screen. In, in, in technology, wonderful. I saw 80% of y'all just have an iPhone. Nobody carries a Bible no more. They just carry it in their iPad and their, and their phone. You know, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Amen. And listen to what it says. And that makes, that makes that you have life and death. Ooh, that was good. That was good. You have life or death in the palm of your hand. That wasn't even in my notes. You could take that for free. That was, that's good stuff right there. Listen to what it says. Those who are dominated by their sinful nature or those who feed their sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit or, being, or feed the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature, so letting your sinful nature, so letting your, letting mean is something that you have to yield to, letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, control your mind leads to life and peace. Life and peace when you allow the Holy Spirit to take control over your life. When you think on good things and when you think on wholesome things, when you um, um, feed off of spiritual things, you're on your way to life and purpose. When you open up that same tablet and look at foolish stuff and sinful stuff, your mind is connected to that, and it sends you to doing things that will lead to your death. Right? This is why coming to church in midweek service is so crucial, because it gives you an opportunity to feed your mind. Don't fool yourself, people of God. There are people that say, well, I don't have to come to church. I could just stay at home. Uh-uh, because what you feed on, that's just like you waking up in the morning saying, hey, you know what, I don't have to eat dinner today. You know, no, you don't. You can live without eating dinner today. You may can get by tomorrow. By the end of the week, you are weak because you haven't eaten anything that is helping you to produce life. 
so it is in your spiritual life. You miss church for a whole week. Next week, you are weak. <laughs> miss church three weeks. You really weak. Miss church a whole month. We have an emergency. <laughs> Miss church a whole year. You are dead spiritually. Really, it happens quicker than that. But just know if you ain't been feeding off of spiritual things, then you've been eating off of natural things or You've been feeding the wrong man. And chaos is happening in your life. There is no peace happening in your life. Look what six says. Six says, so letting sin, your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit control your mind or feeding off of spiritual things lead to life and peace. Wrong way of thinking produces wrong way of living. Wrong way of living will abort your purpose. Listen to what it says. Those who are going back to four, uh, five and, uh, 8 and 5, those who are dominated by the sinful nature thinks about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the spiritual Holy Spirit think about things that pleases the Spirit. So, letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Here's the first thing that you ought to put on your list. You have to feed the spiritual man daily. Daily, daily. Somebody say daily. You ought to have a book in your, you ought to have a, a, a daily bread book or a, a, some kind of devotion that you read every single day. Uh, if you're only coming to church, I got news for you. If you're only coming to church twice a week, you're weak. If that's the only food that you're eating. You have to feed your spiritual man, how long? Daily. daily. Look at your neighbor and say, are you daily eating? All right, point two, you must put to death your sinful nature. Well, if you feed your spiritual nature by eating, how do you kill the sinful nature? You got to starve it for stuff that you want to do. Your flesh cannot be trusted. It wants to please your sinful nature. I said a couple times ago, your flesh is a mess. All right, let's look at, let's look at verse 7. For the sinful nature, why you got to kill it? For the sinful na nature is always hostile to God. That's the reason you got to kill it. Because it's hostile to God. It never did obey God's law, and it never will. I don't care how pretty you look. I don't care how fine your suit is. If you are feeding your sinful nature, you are not in a position to please God in the way that you live. You, you, you got to kill him. You want to kill some? Kill your flesh. Kill your flesh. Beat that booger down. You know? Beat him down. Beat him down. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. Let, let me make sure you understand what this is saying. People who have not committed their lives to Jesus Christ, who have not come under his authority, who have not accepted Christ in their lives, can never please God. They can't, they can't, they can't. If you have, let me say that again. If you are sitting here today and have never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, you are a dead man walking. 
Can't please, you can't please God. You can't please God. If you're not receiving Jesus Christ into your life, you will never be able to fulfill the true purpose that God has in for, the, in for you. In order for God to be pleased with you, you must receive the free gift of the Holy Spirit. It's free. Well, pastor, how do you receive the free gift of the Holy Spirit? By accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior over your life, inviting him into your heart. When you invite Jesus into your heart, he brings you a whole package deal. And the package deal is wonderful. Here's the first thing he brings you, that he washes you of all of the sins that you could ever, ever commit. He takes them all away. Just by you is saying, Lord, come into my heart and believe. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and rose from the grave. By the confession of that, Jesus comes into your life and gives you eternal life package deal. He takes away all of your sins. He takes away everything and gives you brand new life, and you are on your way to heaven, and nothing the devil can do about it. Can a devil in hell stop you from being, getting the blessings that God has for you when you commit your life to him? You are on your way to the best life that you could ever have. All right, but now verse 9 says, but the reason he said, let me go back to, let me go back to 7. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law and it never will. That, that's why those who are still under the control, those are unsaved people, under the control of the sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. Now, these are safe folks. These are people who have committed their lives to God. I'm going somewhere. Hang with me. Those who have committed their lives to Christ, those who have given their hearts to Christ, you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. Those who have not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, you don't belong to Christ at all. And, and, and can I just take a, a detour? Some of the people who, I, I can't judge, I'm not judging, and, but sometimes we see people who say they have and, and we judge God's, on them or the church on them when I can't say who's saved and who's not but the, the fruit ought to bear some kind of the tree ought to bear some kind of fruit that's all I'm trying to say if I'm going to pick some oranges off an orange tree I shouldn't I should see some oranges. If you are a Christian and you say that you love Jesus, if, if you say he is the Lord of your life, it, it, it ought to be some fruit. There's a song that says, you may not be able to sing like angels, you may not be able to preach like Paul, but you ought to be able to show some sign. <laughs> All right, let, let, me, let me come back. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, let, let me go to 10. And Christ lives within you, so even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. Do you see that? You have been made right with God. Hang with me, hang with me. I'm teaching you today. You have been made right with God. I'm talking about being spirit-led. You have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal body by the same Spirit living within you. He is saying you have supernatural power that has come with the Holy Spirit inside of you to conduct your behavior. You have super, look at your neighbor and say, I have supernatural power. Yeah, you, 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 have, you, have went, you have joined the Avengers. Is that the movie? 
Y'all know about that. <laughs> you enjoy the adventures. You have supernatural power. You, you have supernatural power. Ask your neighbor, when is the last time you used it? It's there because you've accepted Jesus Christ. You have power to have self-control over your flesh. All right, y'all saying preach, Pastor. I'm preaching anyway. Preach. All right, listen, listen. Verse 12 tells you, Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation. You notice he said, therefore, brothers and sisters. He's talking to safe folks now. He's talking to people who have committed their lives to Jesus. You have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. He didn't say it didn't urge you. He said you ain't got to follow it. You have to follow the leading of the Spirit if you expect to get the purpose that God has for your life life. Didn't say you weren't going to have the urge. He said you don't have to follow. That's your choice. You have the obligation to say, I'm not going to do it. All right? Why, pastor? For if you live by it dictates, you will die. Sin will kill you. It will kill your relationships. It will kill your reputation. It will kill your character. Sin kills you. Sin ain't playing with you. Sin want to cut your neck off. It want to cut your legs off. It want to cut your arm off. It want to hit you in the heart. Sin ain't playing. He says, if you keep following that joker, you keep on running. He ain't talking to sinners here. He's talking to save people. This doesn't have anything about you going to heaven. This has everything to do about your quality of life on earth. Y'all ain't going to shout with me, but that's all right. Y'all so used to me preaching grace, grace, grace. This is grace. Because if it wasn't for this, you wouldn't know what grace was. This is grace. Listen to what it says. Listen. For if you live by your dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, how are you going to put to death the deeds of your sinful nature? By the power of the Spirit. You can't do it on your own. You got to talk and say, Holy Spirit, I'm feeling some urges. And I need you to rise up in me and put this to death. Y'all just practice that. Y'all just practice that. You, you ought to practice that. You ought to practice that. When you get ready to go off on them in the job, when you get ready to slap them, say, oh, go back in the office, say, Holy Spirit, I feel an urge to, to say something I ain't got no business saying. And, I need you to pull this flesh down. I, I need you to pull it down. I need you to pull it down, you know. You know, somebody lie on you and you get ready to say, hey, who are you talking to, you know? You say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Don't. I need the power for you to pull this urge down. And when you see her and she's not your wife, you see him, and he's not your husband. Holy Spirit, I need the power <laughs> to pull this urge down. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. 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 Anyway, it said, verse 4, 13, for if you live by it, it's dictates, you will die. But if, the, but if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, guess what's going to happen? You will live. You're going to live in peace. You ain't got to run around and grab your cell phone as soon as it go off. 
Hello, somebody. I was born at night, but not last night. You shaking and changing your passwords because you're not living in peace because you've allowed your flesh to get out of the control. Look at your neighbor and say, pull him back and kill him. Yeah, don't just pull him back. Pull him back and kill him. You must put to death your sin nature. By thinking about sin, sin will control you. This is what Pastor Freddie, if I may use your name, Pastor Freddie, here. If it's not what I said, not what you said, then tell me and uh, correct me. Um, this is what we talk about when we preach grace and message and we talk about sin conscience. When you think about sin and think about sin, then you have what we call sin conscience, that you are so focused on sin instead of focused on Jesus' righteousness. You, you got to shift your thinking. See, and that's, what, that's the danger in, 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 in preaching law. It makes you sin conscience when you should be righteous conscience. So you feed your mind on righteous stuff so that when sin pops up, and it will, you have the power and the authority because you've been eating the right stuff to pour down that which is about to take you over. Y'all ain't going to say much. I only got a few claps. That's all right. I'm preaching. All right, all right, all right. You know, you know, you know our whole, I'm, I'm from a Pentecostal church. Anybody from Pentecostal church? Baptized in Jesus' name. Uh, <laughs> see, you went from an apostolic church, you don't understand that. <laughs> so, but they were right about some few things. They were right. They were about a lot of things, but they were right about a few things. One of the things that they were right, right about is that I heard we used to ask questions in Bible class. They used to say, well, pastor, is it wrong to listen to secular music? And no, it's not wrong to listen to secular music, but do you really want to feed on it? What can you handle? If you single, I don't think you want to listen to Luther. You know. You may need to listen to, you know, um, Fred Hammond. Not, not that Luther is wrong, because see, me and my wife can listen to Luther, because when the urge comes, I'm legal. But if you keep watching certain things and looking at certain things and dancing certain ways in certain places, it feeds the wrong man. Nothing's wrong with dancing. It, it's where you are in your life. You can't do certain things because it causes certain reactions and it feeds certain needs that you have. Am I talking to y'all? You got, that's why the Bible say, come away from the very appearance of evil. If it looked like it can turn into something, let me get away from it. Because you got to know when to hold up you got to know when to fold up, and you got to, baby, you got to know. Some stuff you just can't handle. And ain't no sense in fooling yourself. Some things you just can't handle. I, I, was, I was with a pastor the other day. I, I hope I'm, uh, y'all, can I take my time? I was with a pastor the other day, and he does, he does 
very unique things to bring sinners to the Lord. In fact, he had at his church uh, Tank came to his church to sing. I don't know who Tank is. Anybody know who Tank is? All right, all right. I almost said something. Holy Spirit said, don't say that. You make it handle it. I don't know who Tank is. But I do know le legacy. Legacy. So he brings, him, he brings secular people to his church. And when he brings secular people to his church, the church is jammed with sinful people. And he let the secular people sing their secular songs. But then he ministers Jesus to the crowd. And when he finishes, he has hundreds of people to come in. His church have grown to like over 5,000 in like three years because he has just ministered to sinners the, the work of the Lord. He said, but I can't. He says, now I'm free. I'm, I'm free to do everything. He said, but I can't go into the strip joint to minister to the women in the strip joint. He said, that just crosses the line for me. He said, somebody may have to come and get me out. <laughs> See, you got to know your strip joint. You got to learn what your kryptonite is. <laughs> you got to know what's going to make you weak at the knees. And don't fool yourself. Don't play with dynamite with a lit wick on the other end. Talking about Jesus got me. Jesus got me. No, 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 no. You. <laughs> For me, I can go to a gay bar all day. Don't bother me a bit. I could stay in there all day and minister Jesus. Nothing. Nothing about it. Not a thing. Rumbles nothing. But now, if you've been delivered from that, yeah, don't you go there. You send me. Or people like me. Don't talk about, I'm going back into what God called me. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. You stay as far away from there as you can. Am I, am I talking to you? Uh, I, I'm talking. All right, all right, all right. All right, the third thing, third thing. God, I got to hurry up. Y'all was slow saying it. I don't believe you. Let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. I got to hurry up. Point three, you must submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit tells you when to hold up and you don't listen. Listen to what 14 says, for, verse 14. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. I hear people saying that grace message gives us a license to sin. No, it doesn't. Not at all. Not the grace I know. If you are, those who are led by the Spirit, listen, listen what the text says. For all who are led by the Spirit are the children of God. Now, I, the Scripture didn't say this, but can I read this, what it did say and didn't say? It is actually saying the ones that are not led are not his children. If it's saying those who are led are his children, then those who are not led are not his children. You can't lie, lay, stay, marry, sin, and be led by the Spirit. They don't work together. Not led by sin, lie and sin. We all sin. That's why Jesus died. That's what grace comes for. Uh, in fact, J uh, the uh, book of John says, I write to you that you sin not. But, uh, but, 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 if any, any man sin, he is an advocate with the Father. So we all sin, but all of us don't lie there. All of us didn't build a house there. Right. 
You don't want to build a house there. You, you, you may fall there, get up. You don't want to live there. All right, all right, all right. So, so three, we must be led by the Holy Spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, be led by the Holy Spirit. All right, go with me to Galatians, the fifth chapter. Grace is there to cover you if you sin and when you sin, because we all do, but God has already forgiven us of our past and present and future sin. I, here it is. Here it is in a nutshell. God has already forgiven us of our past, present, and future sins, and no sin that you commit is accounted to those that follow his spirit. Amen. Now, I said a mouthful there. And if you heard what I said, you would understand what I just said. You are forgiven of your past, present, and future sins. No sin that you ever will commit will be accounted to your account for those who follow after the Spirit. If you don't follow after the Spirit, then you are none of His. Now, this is a checklist for you. I don't know who that is. This is a checklist for you. You got to check your list and say, am I following God or am I following my flesh? Consistently. All right, all right, all right. Let me hurry up, let me hurry up. Galatians 5th chapter, can I have five more minutes and I promise you I'm out? No, I shouldn't have told you all that. Give me 20 more minutes. I'll finish hopefully in five. Here we go. Galatians 5, 16. Listen to what it says. Listen to what it says. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your life then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Let me say it again. This is Paul preaching to the church. This is not sinners he's talking to. He's talking to us who have a tendency to go after what we want and not go after what God said. He says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your life. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what our sinful nature desire. These two, somebody say these two. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. Why? So that you will not free you, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions, the purpose that God has for you. So sin is trying to keep you from, from getting the purpose that God has in your life. Amen? I say amen. 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 But listen to verse 18. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation of the law of Moses. He says, when you're following the Spirit, you are free from all of that, the law, everything. When you're following after Christ, when you have given your life to Christ, when he's coming to your heart, when he's saying, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Just keep on walking. Point four, I said, following your sinful nature leads to death. For the wages of sin is what? Now, this is good. I'm hurrying up. Verse 19. <clears throat> this is going to help you. Say, well, pastor, what is following my sinful nature? Can you help me? So, at least, at least know what they are. Let me help you find out what they are. When you follow the, the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. This is verse 19. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, that's worshiping an, a different, a, a physical object as a God. I like what the dictionary says. Adultery occurs when you look down at the fruit of your own labor, the status that you crave yourself and worship it. And that's some of us in our own spiritual lives. <clears throat> I ain't like them. You know, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. Uh, hush, you ain't nothing but dirt. And without Jesus, you ain't got nothing to brag on. Do I have a witness in the house? He says, but this is, he's a sorcery, that's witchcraft. I like to call them horoscopes. Astrology. He said, when you wake up in the morning and grab the newspaper to see what 
the astrologist is saying about you instead of grabbing the word, seeing what God is saying about you. He said, you, 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 you feeding the wrong man. Hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambitions, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties. Y'all got quiet on that one. <laughs> and other sinful and other sins like these. He said, he said now, if I didn't call your sin out, if it's something like it. He said, you in trouble. He says, let me tell you again, as I said before, that those who live this sort of life, live this kind of life, who practice this kind of life, who, who have set up shop in this kind of life, who have built a house on this lot. He said, let me say that that kind of life you, uh, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Living in sin will cause you to miss your purpose and also will cause you to be ineffective in the kingdom. That's what he's saying. He, he is not saying you're not going to heaven. He said you're going to heaven without being effective in the earth realm because your sins were settled from the cross of Calvary. But your lifestyle has made it so that you can't draw nobody to Christ because you in the club. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? I'm still talking about allowing the Holy Spirit to lead your life. Every once in a while, y'all need to just hear about sin. Sin is not supposed to. Allowing the Holy Spirit to lead your life. Listen, listen, listen. Verse 5, I mean, uh, number 5, and I'm through. Living by the Spirit, here's what it will do, will produce this kind of life. Love, well, let me go there. But the Holy Spirit, 22, produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed their passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. In other words, in other words, in other words, what you've done is once you came to Christ, you said that I am going to take every desire that is not like Christ. I'm going to give it to Jesus under the authority of Jesus. I'm going to allow him to nail it to the cross. He paid for him. So although I may slip, although I may fall, I'm going to get back up and I'm going to follow after the Spirit of God because that's the person I gave my life to, I gave my heart to, I gave my control to. I want to live for Jesus. And it's through Him that I have eternal life. You you will not be able, here's what I'm trying to tell you. You will not be able to accomplish the purpose that God has for your life if you're going to lay in sin. Yeah, you got to follow the Spirit. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to really tell you the truth. Can I tell you the truth? Those that have given their hearts and life to Jesus can't lay in sin. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Because once he's changed your heart, once you realize what he's done for you on Calvary, once you realize that you have been made brand new, once you realize that the grace of God covers your heart, once you fall in love with Jesus, the more you love him, the less you sin. Wait, 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 wait. I got to quit. Would you give God praise in this place? Give him, give him praise.